What's up fellow journeyers? So I'm here with who I would consider an expert in all matters RVing. He's right over here. Hey JJ, you ready to tell us how to take a look at an RV and make sure it's good to go? Okay, go down, go, uh, go, go RV tank. Go kind of blow. All right, sounds good, there you go. We're Marissa, Nathan, Hensley, and JJ. We sold our house in 2015 and moved into an RV full time to live a life of less junk, more journey. Life is a journey. Let go and get going. Uh, no, no, I've got a Stuart here with me with Thompson RV Service. Stuart has expertise not just in repairs as far as RVs, but also inspection. So it's a really cool mix that I wanted to share with you guys because if you've ever looked at buying an RV or if you have an RV, we're gonna show you guys some of the top things to watch for and especially things that could be so much money that you'll wish you didn't have the RV to start with. And this is where we're gonna start is because Stuart noticed this. Goodness, how long ago was that, Stuart? All right, April. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like six months ago, he said, hey, by the way, you know, there's something going on there. This piece of trim, had started to sag down and like Stuart's like you need to take a look at that water's probably going in there something's going on well something was definitely going on yeah. and then it's just yeah there's like three screw holes missing so this trim piece I'll show you the other side to show you what it should look like and the trim piece was supposed to look like this but Stuart noticed it come down over a half an inch which is not normal and we thought well maybe water had gotten inside of it and caused the wood to expand and was pushing it down but then once Stuart opened it up he saw that there was more than that going on. There wasn't enough water that damaged the wood. The wood wasn't expanding. It was actually the frame itself. So this is what the steel frame does while the jack is up to simulate, you know, if it's on the truck or there's pressure on the nose, you can see it sort of digging into the aluminum part of the frame right there. All right, go ahead. Oh, there you go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and that's what it looks like when the pressure is taken off of the jack. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, look at that separation. Wow. Yeah. Total. Which case is strong. So he's checking with Grand Design, he's checking with Lippert, because the concern is obviously this isn't something that's going to get better on its own. And then if it's just a slight split or crack right now and it totally breaks at where, whatever's going on inside here, we just really want to double check it. I guess this is kind of the lesson here like small things can lead to big issues. We went from like seeing trim slightly out of place to thinking, can we even tow this thing? <laughs> because it might have frame damage at this point. And when we pulled it down, we saw that there was some, you know, a steel plate that ties the frame and the wall section together that wasn't bolted. More, more or less. So, so this all came out and you know, we, we got in touch with the right people just to ensure that that was you know, what was going on in there. Um, I resecured it and then obviously we put everything back together. This was a rare case with you know, thinking it was a sealing issue that turned into kind of a frame issue. But again, don't let little things go by the wayside because they can turn into big things. Yeah, so when you're RVing, if you're towing, if you're parked, you see something, you're like, hmm, that looks a little odd check it out like, like just check it out because it can lead to big issues sometimes i think you you don't know what you don't know and that's scary i know when we started wanting to do the rv lifestyle we had never rv'd before so that was terrifying going and looking at an rv and inspecting it and having no idea what we were doing i know for our first v rv that we ever bought it went terribly wrong and <laughs> our inspection process we didn't have an inspection process yeah. we just sort of bought it and we think of rvs like a car you're like oh well, it's just like three years old what could be wrong you bring it back and you realize oh everything's wrong <laughs> like, it's not like a car and, and i think with a big know what you don't know things is hey things are gonna break nothing's perfect new ones used it doesn't matter they're all gonna have issues just start to learn what those big issues could be based on the small things you see and then go from there and like all this stuff we're talking about for the most part this is these are all things we've seen on our rigs over the last six seven years um, and these are things if you have especially whether it's new or used it doesn't matter you will probably see one of these five things going on with your rig if not now at some point the other is something that Stuart actually went with me to uh to new york to look at a rig we honestly didn't even make it to the ac's in the refrigerator this rv been ridden pretty hard so the very first thing i have to do when we get this back to tennessee is i have to take it somewhere and immediately start getting work done on the axles and then replacing the tires underneath where the main galley sink is there had been a leak at some point and the underbelly had been sliced open the insulation had been removed there was a leak on what one of the gaskets on we both feel like he knew right Oh yeah, we feel pretty certain he knew. Oh yeah. I thought this is a done deal. We're buying this thing. We got there, and one of the first things we noticed was weird 
tire wear. With a lot of fifth wheels and travel trailer specific, there's been a lot of issues within the suspension aspects of things with uh, hangers getting bent and whatnot, which causes the tires to more or less to run it down the road a little bit cockeyed, um, which you know cooks the tread off on one side. Weird tire wear is a great indicator that something with the suspension aspect isn't right. One thing I ran into, uh, we went, I went with Scott to Texas to pick up the Airstream. You guys remember the Airstream? That thing rocked, but the tires and the condition of the tires did not rock. We were hoping maybe the tires would make it back to Tennessee and we could replace them there, but that's not even going to be the case. We got to get them replaced ASAP. <laughs> the worst thing about the tires is not, oh my goodness, I lost a tire. It's that when the tire blows, which it can be dangerous for you towing it too, but when the tire blows, it'll a lot of times it'll damage your RV when the you know everything starts blowing out. You really want to ask ahead of time how old are these tires, what kind of condition are they in, and a lot of times when you're buying a used rig, the Airstream was like 10 years old-ish, like the tires were just shot. We couldn't even tow this. We barely got it to a place to get new tires on it. With all tires, you're going to have a DOT tape code, which will be over here. Sometimes it's on the outside, sometimes it's on the inside of the tire. So this is 3419 meaning that this tire was manufactured the 34th week of 2019. Most of these tires are good for about five years. When you get into the class B's and you know class A's, some of those tires can go up to seven years. And I believe Michelin with their like big, big tires, you know, on like diesel pushers, will go up to 10 years. All right, the roof. How often should somebody get on their roof and take a look and see what's going on, you think? Especially if you're full time, once a month. Okay. Then honestly, I mean, you get up on your roof to clean your slides off before moving, take an extra five minutes and just look around. If you're looking at buying an RV, like the roof to me, like either bring somebody with you who can get on the roof if you can't do it or get up there yourself. Like critical, critical, critical. I can't believe I said that three times without <laughs> getting to tongue twister, but super important to take a look at the roof. What's the most common thing you think people need to be looking at or looking for when they're on a roof. The big things are cracks and sealant, and this is honestly new and used. Um, I would say probably 80% of even every new unit I look at, I at least find one very, usually minor stuff. It's not drastic by any means. Yeah, your RV, it's, it's like an, your home is like under an earthquake going down the road. I mean, it's shaking all the time. And when you're saying sealant. The corners are usually the most prominent area to you know break open, and it's usually down this gutter line right here which on this model had that exact crack open. Water damage is by far, in my opinion, the number one destroyer of an RV. Um, and it's the most common thing that we find. Yeah, and so pro tip, when you're looking to buy an RV, how they've stored the RV is a big deal. If you, if they take, and that's what people do, they take a picture of it underneath covered storage, or if you see it in inside storage, well, first of all, it's, it's probably a fake ad. But if it is real um, and they have been storing it inside or they've been keeping it under some sort of a cover, it's a big deal versus an RV that's been the same amount of time. It's just been sitting out in the elements. And a big issue from the rain, which typically is coming from the roof area, is delamination. Like, a few things if you find it going on with an RV, really, really, really good chance you need to just walk away, right? Like, uh, so delamination is one of those big time issues. Definitely, it's one of those, it's expensive, it's hard to find people to repair it. And usually if it's already gone to where you have some pretty bad delamination, it's you got a lot of issues inside as well that probably haven't shown themselves yet either. And now Stuart's saying one of the best places to spot delamination is actually while you're on the roof because you what you look down, so looking look, down. Yeah, so look straight down the side, okay. and you know you'll be able to see if like it ripples up or whatnot. And then actually from the ground, I'll shine a flashlight straight up, um, which again just really highlights any areas that possibly are soft or have already started to bubble out a little bit. And then if you see any of that, you know, like a physical push to see if it's soft. Mm -hmm. is a way to kind of confirm it. Okay, so some of these, the tires, you just factor that into the price, or you factor that into, hey, just keep those up to date. Keep some of these, like the lamination, you just walk away. <laughs> Another one of these, it could be a really big deal. Like, honestly, when I'm looking to buy an RV, this is one of the first things I look at, because you can do this online, or you can ask the seller. You say, hey, what's the payload on the RV? And a lot of people be like, the what? What's, what's payload? What does that mean? Payload is more or less how much weight you can put inside the unit and legally be within capacity on the axles. Now you have to determine what's a good payload for what you need by figuring out how much your stuff weighs basically and whether you're gonna be full-time or a weekend camper, all that comes into play. But I can say once you figure out that number, like you really need to pay attention to payload because what'll happen sometimes is you see the payload number on the brochure, the payload number on, even at the dealership website may not be the actual payload of the RV. So where's the payload usually at on different RVs? Well, this one, this is a fifth wheel, so. So fifth wheel travel trailer, I would say, almost 100% of those, it's gonna be right here. 
Um, on a Class A, sometimes it's up by the driver's seat area, like right behind the seat on the wall. Like Class C's and B's, it will actually be in the driver's like door panel, like right where the VIN number is. It will also have uh, the manufacturer plate with this information telling you what like your GVRW is and whatnot. So this particular model, we have a payload of 3,214 pounds. Some state the payload, some you actually have to do the math from the GVRW and the unloaded vehicle weight. If you wanna get super technical on the payload, um, I'll link to Mark's video with Keep Your Daydream. I know he went in depth. Um, I, he went, I think he was focusing on trucks, but anyways, I'll link to that video where he kind of tells you how to calculate payload, what you're looking for, what you can do with it, what you can tow, because this comes into play with your tow vehicle and stuff too, not just the trailer itself. Why's your truck time? Okay, it's take turn. Take turn. Ready? There's also small things that can turn into big problems on the inside of the RV that you want to look out for. To me, the two biggest, the roof of the RV and then the frame or the bottom part of the RV. What are we looking for inside the RV that you think are most common or easy to spot or that'll make a big difference if you can just see this and either start asking questions or maybe just walk away? A continuation of like the water from the outside, these flaps, pull them up. Usually a lot of the times, if you have water within that, you'll start seeing it swell up in here. Oh. This is the actual floor of the slide. I pick this up and pull it, you know, and just look at the entire thing. The other thing is, is kind of walk around, be heavy footed in places. I mean, they're all gonna be somewhat spongy to a degree, but you'll feel like walk the edges of like a slide around Kitchen Islands is another common area for, for water. Underneath where the main galley sink is, uh, there'd been a leak at some point. So again, just kind of, you know, kind of be spongy. Dance, I like your dance. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you're looking, you're looking for a, a difference, a drastic difference. So if you're walking along and all of a sudden there's a spot in the floor that's in the middle of the floor and it's like a trampoline, like they did not design the RV to have a trampoline in the middle of the floor. Like something, something's going on right there. <laughs> it's not good. What about the roof? What are we kind of looking for? Especially with like travel trailers, because the roofs are a lot of the times arched. Usually if you have water, it doesn't matter if it's even from an AC, we'll travel down the walls and we'll show itself in the trim in the corner. You're yeah, you're, you're, you want to stare at the entire roof. And then the other great spot is to like open cabinets, look up in the corners. Again, look at everything, bring a flashlight and just check everywhere. I think you're definitely seeing a common theme of water damage. <laughs> it's not good, <laughs> super common, become very good at figuring out where water damage could have happened. All right, something else you wanna watch for? <laughs> Hensley, you know how long, this is gonna take you forever to clean this up. I'm just gonna close this door, and continue our inspection. <laughs> kids will uh... That's a number two destroyer. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, kids are also a destroyer of RVs, so. <laughs> Okay, bonus time, five small things that can lead to big problems, but also I wanna give you guys five tools, Stuart and doing RV repair, tools that he sees himself, he's picking up over and over, or tools that he think, if you're buying an RV, these are five things that are great to have, to check out some of the stuff we're talking about, or just an everyday RV life, honestly, we've got a lot of these same things, these are really good to have. This is Stuart's repair truck, by the way. Dude, I am totally jealous of your Milwaukee stuff. <laughs> Look at this. Oh man, what's that's is that your welder? Stuart also welds, which is a pretty handy thing if you know somebody who knows how to weld on the road. Like, um, <laughs> you need to love on your welders because they can come in really handy with stuff. The first thing is a boost box of some type. I love these Nocos, they are, I, I mean, it's tiny, it's a flashlight. You has USB ports and everything else, so you can use it as a charging device if you're boondocking. Like this particular one, which is tiny, will jump start this diesel truck with zero batteries connected. These are Ninja Tools, or what's what's this? Exactly, it's 100 percent Ninja Tools. <laughs> <laughs> These are just plastic nylon scrapers, um, which which are great for you know when you're resealing a rig or needing to pry on something that you know you don't want to put a ton of force on. These I use constantly. A turn up on tape. So this stuff, roof repairs. I mean, if you guys don't want to deal with different types of lap sealants and carrying a caulk gun and everything else this is the absolute best boo-boo repair more or less you know if you scrape a tree branch pulling in somewhere or if there's a thunderstorm and a tree branch comes down dry the area off this stuff sticks and once it's down it doesn't come up so like general hand tools that you know you don't need to carry an entire you know toolbox with you this is a general screwdriver has multiple bits in it so this is the nut driver version oh, so like wow. this is like for you know sockets and whatnot i want to say there's eight different sizes within this to upsize that a little bit if you need you know use of wrenches a good quality adjustable wrench 
will get you out of you know a lot of binds. I mean, I've used this on suspension and whatnot, like flashlights. Most people make fun of me because I have too many of them, but a good quality flashlight of any type. Headlamp, if you only want to have one, is great because you use it around the campfire, you use it to work on stuff. Huh. 3D you printer. <laughs> Did you add, oh, you 3D printed that? I yeah. was like, there's no way that came attached to the back of that. Yeah, so I 3D printed a, you know, pack out. Do you puck. travel with a 3D printer? I did. <laughs> I, I, I had to lose my 3D printer for a washer dryer combo. Oh <laughs> but, no, but, but what yes. is the world coming to? We're gonna play a game Nick, called, uh, what does this tool do? What does this tool do? Um, it's a true RMS yeah, No, 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 you don't get to read it. Does it like check polarity? It does, but what does that mean? What, what, what would you do with that? You <laughs> just get in an outlet? I don't know. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, look at There me. you go, all right. What is this What is this thing? It's a pressure gauge. For what? For tires. Oh, all right. All right. You know, all right. <laughs> this did not go like I thought it would. These two, what are these? They're scrapers. Sure they're not ninja weapons? <laughs> For a rave. <laughs> you didn't know I was an RV inspector on the side. You? <laughs> you want to jump up to expert level? Let's do it. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Go. Oh. Expert level. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. What's this? No. You know reading. You don't have to read. <laughs> what? It's Stop got a, re a ruler. Next, on next it. thing you're gonna do is start googling it. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this, Stuart? That uh, looks like a weapon. Digital caliper for for measuring. Okay. So she, she was right. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she got the measuring part right. I think I'm like 10 for 10 right now. So. Something that's used quite a bit in an RV, but you can figure out what that one is. A paper cutter. Hole puncher. Let's see if Nathan knows what it is. It's a clamp. No, this This is to work out your grip. For PEX to, uh, fittings. PEX fittings, of course. <laughs> you did good, you nailed it. So if you watch this video and you're thinking, you know what? This seems a little overwhelming. I think I want somebody <laughs> to either do it for me or help me out. Uh, you're also in luck. We have our other resident expert named Hensley. What's your biggest advice when it comes to fixing an RV? Well, I think maybe you should fix it or maybe use like hammers or paint to seal up the scratches and stuff, you know. Sounds good. So I'll leave her info in the description. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, if you want to get a hold of Stuart, uh, I, he will be in the Florida area this winter through March. Um, I'll leave his contact information in the description below. Uh, definitely check that out. Little things definitely can lead to big problems when it comes to RVing. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. <laughs> That's pretty country. <laughs> you want to catch you guys later. <laughs> what are you taking a photo of? Smoke follows beauty. It's like all over Corey right now. <laughs> it's like a smoke bomb. I like, I thought it would be a few seconds, but we're working on like 10 minutes here. <laughs>